was here, in the russet hills of Chetford, that Edgar Felchnik was to spend the final years of his life before dying somewhere else. Life had not been easy on Felchnik. In fact, it had been okay. But after years of working hard, he had finally got a job. His real ambition, however, was to be a poet. And it's surely a testament to his success that whenever anyone thinks of him, they think of Chetford. In this series, we'll be looking at some of the UK's most national locations and the people that have given them a place in our heritage now. This week it's Chetford, England. It was a gripping time to be alive. After months of waiting, the war with France had finally begun. Trade was on fire. And all across the country, there was a sense that the 18th century was the longest it had ever been. It was on March that month, literally one day from Edgar's life, that he would sell his first and only poem. It wasn't much, but it was a start. And it brought him the recognition that he deserved more money for it. Lo, it is morning today. The trees exhume their waking hush. And yet what rancid sound is this? Thy trumpet of mine ear is full of yoky swallow chaff, a foul and creamy sing-song expelled about the bushels. Oh, bitter poison, like that itchy pod from which you feedeth. Oh, what soily weaving have you come from? From what hairy clutch of eggs assigned you poke your face in day's bright crack? Enough. I have salted on myself. It's hard to imagine how different the place must have been 200 years ago. At that point, the village was barely bigger than it is now. One thing we do know is that the diet was much simpler. Meals consisted almost entirely of potatoes and foxes. Ian Girth is an expert in the show. Well, of course, back then, all of this would have been almost completely covered in foxes. And how do you think that change has impacted on the local ecosystem? Well, for example, in this field alone, you can see that there are almost no foxes. Gosh, yeah. Nowadays, of course, the region thrives on its agriculture and an economy. Jams are produced ethically using live fruit and cheeses are made using 100% natural cows. He handled the cheese a bit too much for my liking, but nevertheless, it was lovely. Steve Pick is head of the local gardening association, the majority of whose members home grow and the remainder of which own gardens. I've come to visit his plot, which is just outside. At the beginning. Right, and then. Uh, oh, what are wait. these? Hey, do you like them? These are just weeds. Yeah. Past here, I've got a, a crab bushel. I mean, a lot of people say they can never live in a house without a garden. You know, I prefer to think of my garden as my house, and, and my house is just you know, somewhere I um, live with my wife. I mean, it's literally like a, like a second home to me. I mean, what we're trying to do locally is to encourage total self-sufficiency. I mean, that means cultivating plants that are able to you know, grow themselves. Uh, yeah, there's the crab bushel I was talking about. I mean, this is where we grow the flies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sort of like oh, a good. bad dream. Yeah. Oh, come, it is almost late. The woods grow thick with boredom. The stream is full of strong red water. Some rocks fall off a wall. A farmer sets fire to a scarecrow. Edgar's body was brought back from somewhere where it was placed here in the local park as a testament to low funding. A little while later, 
a review committee decided it was a disservice to the children and had the area walled off. A life-size statue of a church was placed here in his honour. History is unpredictable. It can happen at any time and any place. Sometimes it takes months, even years. The history of Chetford is a history riddled with bits and riddles, but one every inch of which is worth unravelling. Que soit 